Hi there, I'm Jay Filer from Winterborne Bicycle Institute, and today we're going to be covering a bottom bracket frame repair. So here's the bike frame in question. Uh, we have the head tube here, top tube, down tube, seat tube, we have the seat stays and the chain stays, and of course we have the bottom bracket shell. That's this area of the frame right here. This is where the bottom bracket is going to be installed into the frame, and then the crank arms are going to be installed onto the bottom bracket. So you have an idea of uh, where the area is on the bike that we're going to be doing the repair on. Now, what can happen in a lot of cases is the bottom bracket, if the bottom bracket gets incorrectly installed into the frame, then what can happen is the, the threads of the frame can get chewed out, uh, they can get what's called cross-threaded, and then the frame, is no, the, the frame would be no good at that point. So what I'm going to show you today is I'm going to show you how to repair these threads. The tooling is quite expensive for it. This is not something you're going to be able to do at home. But mainly the idea is to say, look, you don't have to throw out that old frame. It is completely repairable. Now, most threads that we're going to be that were that would be wrecked in a bottom in a bottom bracket shell are going to be an what's referred to as an English bottom bracket shell, uh, also called a Japanese International Standard. You'll see this in the literature JIS, referring to Japanese International Standard, and English are both the same dimensioning. What we're going to end up doing is we're going to end up reaming that shell out to a new size, a new dimension, uh, but first I'll show what the JIS dimension should be, or English. So here we have English, and forgive my uh, handwriting here, the, the standard dimension for the English bottom bracket shell is 1.375 inches. Okay, so that's the actual diameter, the inner diameter of the bottom bracket shell of the English, or JIS, Japanese International Standard. Now this 1.375 is the diameter. What you'll see this reflected as is 1.375 by 24 threads per inch. In other words, TPI. If you were to translate this into a metric dimension, the 1.375 comes out to 34.92 millimeters. Now why is this important? Well, because the Italian bottom bracket shell dimension, their inner diameter is a 36 millimeter shell. So here's our next step right here. Um, Notice the difference between the imperial measurement and the metric measurement. Now here's something interesting. That 36 also is a 24 TPI. Also has 24 threads per inch. And the reason that we can do this job is because there's room here in order to enlarge this bottom bracket shell uh, to the larger size. These are the independent bottom bracket shells that are out of the frame. Here is the uh, English shell or the JIS shell. There's our 1.37 right there. Okay, so there's our inner diameter of the bottom bracket shell. Now this is going to be the shell that would be wrecked in the frame that we're going to use. Here is a thread pitch gauge and as you can see I have this set to the 24 and here's how you would measure the actual threads is just by putting the teeth of the thread pitch gauge into the shell itself and lining them up so that there's no gaps between these notches here. And this is 24 TPI. Now here is our Italian bottom bracket shell. Okay, slightly larger in diameter and we can just measure that off. So here's our 36 millimeter uh, inner diameter. One more dimension you should be concerned about is the actual bottom bracket shell width. A traditional Italian bottom bracket shell, if we close this off, zero it out, is going to be 70 millimeters, so it's two mil larger in diameter. So when you do buy the new bottom bracket shell to go into your, your JIS bottom bracket shell frame, keep in mind that you have to buy the one that's meant for 68 millimeters in width. So what we have here is our tools that we're going to need to, to complete the job. Uh, firstly, we have our reamer. Um, this is the tool that's going to be going into the bottom bracket shell and essentially uh, reaming out the inner diameter of the shell and making it larger. Okay, So this very sharp tool, uh, the cutters on these threads are very sharp and that's why we have our gloves here as well. Uh, you're going to want to put some work gloves on for this job, not only to keep the cutting fluids off of your hands, but also to keep any chips that come out of the, the bottom bracket shell while you're cutting it or just to help protect you against the sharpness of the blades of the cutter as well. Uh, then another tool that we have, once we, we've reamed out the bottom bracket shell, we're going to be using our uh, basically taps. They're taps specifically designed for the bicycle industry. Uh, these are our Italian taps. They're uh, 36 by 24 TPI as we mentioned before. 
And uh, one thing that we haven't talked about up to this point is the thread direction. Now we're going to be working with an Italian thread pitch, so both of these taps on both the left hand side or left hand side of the bike and the right hand side of the bike are both right hand thread. So we don't ne really need to be concerned about which tap is going in where because we're going to be cutting a right hand thread on both le or right and left side of the bike. Uh, and of course we have our cutting fluid, we'll be using this in order to save the life of our tools and just uh, facilitate the, the whole job in the shell, it just makes things go a little bit smoother. And here we are, we're just showing the damage to the actual threads in the shell that the current frame has. Just look right there, you can see all of this damage. This basically makes the, uh, the bottom bracket shell useless at the moment, we can't even thread a regular bottom bracket shell in there, so this is why we need to do the job, there's the damage right there. So what I've done now is uh, we're going to get into the meat and the potatoes of this repair, which is actually reaming out the current bottom bracket shell. Uh, I've got a rag on the ground to collect any cutting fluid or any cutting oils that are going to start to drip off of this bottom bracket shell. Here's my cutting fluid. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to squirt a generous amount in there. Okay, and I'm also going to treat my tool, uh, my cutter, and of course I'm going to put my gloves on too just so I don't end up with a chip or a metal sliver, anything like that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a bunch of cutting fluid on this cutter and I'm going to install it in the shell. Now something else you want to be, here's another, another thing you need to be concerned about. These cutting tools are only, they only operate in one direction, which is to the right. In other words, clockwise. If I was to turn these handles counterclockwise, then what ends up happening is uh, you're going to end up dulling the tool. Um, here is my first piece that goes in. This is a VAR tool that I'm using for the reaming. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert the chuck on this side, basically a spacer. This tool operates with spring tension, so as I increase the spring tension, whoop, spring tension on the tool, it's going to pull the reamer in closer. So I'm going ahead and I'm installing the, the part of the tool that's going to pull the cutter in and I'm going to start to turn this to the right. Now you can see the reaming starting to occur. Once it starts to get a little bit loose and I'm not cutting any more material out, I'm going to go ahead and add more tension to the other side and continue reaming out the old threads. Now this is an aluminum bottom bracket. So this cutter should just cut through it like butter. Now that being said, we can also do this with uh, steel as well. I'm pretty sure I've got them all now. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to back the tool off. And I'm still only going to pull the tool in one direction, but at the same time, I'm going to start pulling the tool out of the frame. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the rest of the other side off. And there we go. Okay, so you can see in this angle where uh, we haven't actually reamed out the, the threads. So you can see here, here's the threads that we've already reamed out. Uh, now this area is enlarged in diameter. And if you just look in here a little bit closer, you can also see that there's that area that I missed. So I'm just going to reinsert the tool and I'm going to ream the rest of the threads out on the left hand side of the bike. Put the rest of my pieces in place. Here's my guide, my spring, and then the nut portion that is going to pull the tool in. You can see the tool sort of being pulled in now. And I'm turning the tool clockwise and adding tension to that spring. And we're going to get the rest of those threads out. So I'm going to back the tool off. And as I'm backing it off, I'm going to pull the handles and continue to turn the handles clockwise. Okay, remember, we never want to turn this tool counterclockwise. There we go. So now we'll just inspect the inside of the shell. Chips coming out of there. See those little pieces of metal on my gloves? So now we have to do the other side of the shell. Okay, so here's the perfect angle of showing here are the current threads that need to be cut out. And if you look on the other side of the shell, just in here, you can see my scribe is pointing to it. Oops. 
there, there's the part that's already been reamed out. That's the left side of the bike. So what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna cut our threads in. If you wanna come and have a quick close up now, you can also see I've got the chips cleaned out and you can see that the, uh, the shell is now basically a blank shell. So it's ready for our Italian threads, okay? Um, here's our thread cutters. We don't really need to worry about a left and a right as both of these cutters are right-hand thread. Um, we wanna make sure that uh, we have enough cutting oil in here again because we are cutting threads. Just gonna put some cutting fluid in there, maybe put the bike like that so it doesn't drip out. And I'm gonna put some cutting fluid on the threads of the tool on this side as well. Notice that I'm being careful not to bang these together. The cutters are quite expensive. I think to replace just the cutters are something like $400. So you want to try and salvage them as much as you can. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert, you can see the tool has got a pin on this side and then it's going to insert in here on the other side. So this is how this is going to center up for us in the shell. We want to be careful here because now we're cutting threads into the shell. So we want to do this very carefully. We don't want to rush it. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead. I'm lining up the pin. Now I'm bringing the tools in together. They are tapered a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just start, I'm, I'm still holding the tools. I'm applying a little bit pressure to, towards each other and I'm going to turn the cutter in just to get a few bites on the threads and then I'm going to turn this handle in to get a few bites on the threads. Notice that I'm going in, it's actually pretty tough to do. Um, once I get a couple of turns in, I'm going to turn them back. Just go a couple of turns in and turn them back. I'm going to make sure that I have enough cutting fluid on here can certainly feel when I'm cutting the new threads. Even an equal pressure and back the tool out a bit, bring it back in again. Basically take the tool up until you can't see the cutting portion any longer. So what I'm doing is I'm just switching the sides up. Um, I found that the one cutter is definitely duller than, duller than the other side. The side that was cutting the right hand side is now going to be cutting the left hand side. Now this doesn't really matter in this case because we are using an Italian thread. And there we go. Notice how the tool is buried, cutting portion of the tool. You can't see it anymore. All we can see is the actual tap handle. And now I'm going to back it out and then we'll show you the inside of the shell. And there's the inside of the shell. You can see all the thread stuff that's been cut. A little basket of bird's nest of threads if you want. And there's our nice new clean threads. So the next step would be to clean those threads up. I like to use some isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag and just sort of squirt it in there. You want to be careful that you're not, uh, you don't touch the outside of the frame with a rag that you've used to clean the chips out of the bottom bracket shell uh, because you could end up scratching the frame with the chips, yeah? So just carefully do this. And there's our brand new threading. We've reamed out the English bottom bracket shell. And now we have an Italian thread pitch. So this frame is now usable again. All we'd have to do would be to, uh, well, the next step that I would do in this repair is I would now face the shell using another cutting tool. Um, but we're gonna cover that for another video down the road. Uh, for now, this is the reaming and retapping from a JIS or English style bottom bracket shell and retapping it into an Italian bottom bracket shell now rendering the frame once again usable. As far as I know, there really no, is no other fix for a frame in this position. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.